Hello and welcome to Explore Classroom. My name is Gina Borgia and I am so glad you are joining us today. At National Geographic, we believe in the power of exploration, wonder, and storytelling to change our world for the better. This Explorer Classroom YouTube show connects students around the world with our National Geographic Explorers for short lessons and time for your questions. Today, our explorer is Nicolas Perez Consuegra. Nicolas is a scientist from Colombia who studies geosciences. This means he learns about the Earth and how it changes over time, as well as how the Earth changes affect people and wildlife. He explores answers to questions like, how do mountains grow? And how do canyons form? Today, Nicolas is going to share all about changing landscapes and how understanding the past can help predict and prevent future disasters like floods and mudslides. But first, I'd like to say a great big welcome to our viewers from around the globe. Our shout outs for today's episode go to 191 Virtual, Mr. Ibarra's class at Armijo Elementary, Colegio Jorge Washington, Hilliard City School District, Duke of Connaught, Northdale Public School East, Thomas Jefferson Middle School, TDSB, March Academy, William F. Halloran School 22, Planet English School, Namzamo High School, St. Jude, X Venture Homeschoolers, Aquinas Montessori School, South Elementary School, the Dawa Homeschool, and the Wong family. We are so thrilled to have you here. And with all of that out of the way, let's get this Explorer Classroom started. It is time to turn it over to Nicolas to share all about changing landscapes. Take it away, Nicolas. Hi, Gina. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Let me put my presentation. Okay, is it okay? Can you see it? I'm very excited to, to be here today and have the opportunity to speak to all of you about my work as a scientist and National Geographic Explorer. In the past 10 years, I have been studying how the earth changes through time. And today I want to convince you that mountains can move and grow over time. I wanted to start this presentation by sharing with you a little bit about my life story. I was born in Colombia, a country located in South America and indicated in the map by the red star. The house where I grew up was in the mountains and surrounded by forest. When I was young, I was very curious and I spent lots of time exploring the outdoors. Every day after coming from school, I would play with my cousin by climbing trees and running around exploring and picking up leaves, fruits, and all sorts of insects. I also enjoyed going on hikes with my family. Being born in Colombia made me experience its great biodiversity. Throughout my life, I have been able to explore the beautiful mountains and tropical forests of this region. In my hikes, I constantly find amazing flowering plants and exotic animals. My home country, Colombia, is also full of amazing landscapes, including tall mountain ranges, similar to the Rocky Mountains, and incredible canyons, similar to the Grand Canyon in the US. When I was younger and later as a scientist, I have been very curious about the rocks that I find when hiking the mountains of Colombia. I have spent lots of time exploring and hammering many rocks throughout the country. And I have found many fossils. These are examples of the fossils that I have found in the mountains since I was a kid. As you can see, they have very interesting shapes that resemble some sort of snail. Fossils are so abundant in many towns in Colombia that people use these fossils for decoration, creating unique designing features that blend the architecture with the local geology. The fossils that I found belong to prehistoric animals 
that died and were buried by sand or mud, and eventually became rocks. One of the most common fossils that I would find were ammonites, which are ancient mollusks, related to squids and octopuses, but with a hard shell. These ammonites used to swim in ancient oceans. I would also find these rocks full of shells, similar to the ones you can find if you go on a walk on a beach. The shells belong to many different types of marine organisms. All these fossils that I was finding were from animals that used to live in the oceans and did not belong to the mountains. I started asking myself, how could these fossils have arrived to high elevations in the mountains? I thought about two hypotheses or ways of explaining these fossil findings. One of the hypotheses was correct and the other wrong. I will explain to you both hypotheses and then tell you which one is the correct one and why this mattered to us, humans living in these landscapes. The first hypothesis or possibility was that in the past, the sea level had been very high, several miles above the present day sea level. The high sea level would have covered the mountains in the region. Some of the animals that live in the ocean and died would have been deposited on top of the mountains and eventually became rocks. And then at some point when the sea level had dropped, the mountains would have been exposed as we see them today. When I went to the university and became a scientist, my research showed me that this hypothesis was wrong. The sea level had not been higher than the mountains in the past. The correct hypothesis or way to explain the fossil findings on top of the mountains was that the mountains had grown taller and taller over time, starting at low elevations and reaching several miles high in the present. And this is where I want to convince you that mountains can grow and move over time. Check out this animation of a mountain growing through time. The second hypothesis was that in the past, the mountains in this region did not exist, but instead we only had a sea. This sea had animals such as ammonites, fish and shellfish living in it. When some of the organisms died, they went to the bottom of the sea and were buried by sand and mud. Over time, different layers of sand and mud with fossils were deposited, and these layers eventually converted into rocks. Finally, due to geological forces, the mountains had grown and had dramatically changed the landscape from being an ocean to a mountainous environment. Isn't this amazing? Well, I was fascinated after learning that mountains can grow over time. And since then, I have been traveling to many places around the world to study how mountains grow and to explore remote areas of the world. My favorite field location are the mountains in Colombia, full of immense waterfalls and crystalline rivers. Here is a video of one of my favorite field locations in Colombia. Isn't this a cool place? After studying the mountains around the world, I have learned that some mountains are growing fast, whereas other mountains are growing slower or actually not growing at all. Mountain rangers that are active and growing fast, like the example in blue to the left, tend 
to reach much higher elevations than the old or slow growing mountain ranges, like the one shown in red. The faster, mountain, the faster growing mountain ranges, like the one on the left, also tend to be steeper. So if you were going to hike these two mountains, you would get more tired in the faster growing mountain that is on the left. It would be easier to hike the red mountain on the right. Throughout my research, I found that several of the mountains of Colombia are very tall and steep and are actively growing. These were the same mountains where I had found the marine fossils. I also found out that in the mountains that are actively growing and very steep, there are more landslides and the erosion of these mountains is higher. Landslides occur when large portions of the mountains fail and fall catastrophically down slope. In this picture, you can see a mountain in Colombia with multiple landslides. Under understanding where landslides can occur is important because landslides can have catastrophic consequences if they occur near cities or towns. In my home country, Colombia, landslides often cause terrible disasters, killing people and destroying infrastructure. As a scientist, I have been using knowledge and research to understand where the most active and rapidly growing mountain ranges are located. In my work, I make maps, and now I want to show you one of the maps that I have created and how it is useful. By identifying the active mountains in a map, I have been able to understand where the regions more susceptible to erosion and landslides are located, and thus help prevent future disasters. This is a map of slopes or steepness of the landscapes. Therefore, the colors indicate if the steepness of the mountains are high or low on a given region. Where the color blue is displayed, the slopes are high, or you can say that the mountains are very steep and are active. Instead, where the colors are orange, the slopes are very low and the mountains are not as active. The light blue and greenish colors indicate intermediate steepness. In this map, you can see two regions with very steep mountains, highlighted with the black circles. Here is a question for you. If you were an engineer or an architect, would you build a town near these mountains? Let me give you a clue. Remember that the deep blue regions are the regions that are steeper and the, where the mountains are growing and may have, have more landslides and may have higher erosion. So as scientists, we should say that the answer is no, do not build in these regions because the houses and the population would be living near mountains that are too steep and are prone to having more landslides and having high erosion. Instead, a good solution would be to build near mountains that have lower slopes and where erosion is lower and landslides, landslides are less common. I hope that after seeing this presentation, you have learned that mountains can grow and that different types of mountains grow at different rates or speeds. Some are growing fast, whereas other mountains are growing slower or actually not growing at all. The speed at which mountains are growing can affect how tall and steep they are. And this in turn can affect the erosion and landsliding in these mountains. Here I have put this picture so you can see some active mountains to the left and an old or slow growing mountain to the right. And I brought some examples, for example, an old mountain range could be the Appalachians in the eastern United States, 
Whereas when you go to the Western United States, to the Rocky Mountains, the Sierra Nevadas, or the coast, coastal mountain ranges of California, you have active mountain ranges that are actively uplifting and where processes like landsliding and high erosion are very common. As a scientist and National Geographic explorer, I have had the opportunity to, to travel to some fantastic places around the world. If you want to become an explorer, I encourage you to be curious and ask many questions. Go outside and look at nature, the trees, animals, rocks and landscapes that surround you. Thank you for listening to my talk and I would be happy to answer any questions. Awesome. Well, friends, we've come to the end of our show. So I will end on one final question for Nicolas. Do you have general advice for all of the young explorers out there? Yeah, I, I think my, my general advice is to, to enjoy things that you do in life and, and do things with, with passion. So if you're at school, try to learn the most that, that you can from, from your teachers and from your, your classmates. When you go out into the parks and the outdoors, explore, go around walking and looking at, at things, try to see the trees that are uh, in, in your parks, try to see the rocks that are, that are there, what animals uh, live there. And think about how you influence uh, these things, like, like the, the animals and, and plants around you, the water from your local rivers, um, and how all those things influence, influence you. But stay curious and, and pursue your um, the things that you like with, with passion. I think that's, that's the best advice that, that, I, that, I, that I can give you. And don't be scared about, about science. science. Science is actually really fun and can take you to some very amazing landscapes around the world. Like it has been uh, my, my case. I have been able to explore many regions around, around the world, incredible landscapes full of waterfalls, and tall mountain ranges. And this is just because I decided to be to be a scientist. There are many paths that you can that you can take in life, but just whatever you do, enjoy what 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 you decide to do. Thank you, Nicolas, for that fabulous advice. And thank you for being here with us to share all about your amazing work. We really appreciate it. And to all the students out there, we appreciate your thoughtful questions. And thank you, of course, to our teachers for making these events possible for your students. I hope to see all of you again soon. Join any of our future events. We'll be right back here next Thursday with explorer Ana Maria Benavides, who specializes in studying air plants. You can register your student group for a shout out during the event and a chance to be up here on screen with us at natgeoed.org slash explorer classroom. Happy Women's History Month. We encourage you to learn about the women who have helped shape our world. Teachers, you can help students celebrate and learn about this history with a curated collection from our resource library. Or you can check out our most recent virtual field trip featuring some of the amazing women explorers here at National Geographic. I hope everybody has a great day. Stay curious, keep exploring.